they're not going to understand all these types of malicious activities, and they're certainly not going to understand all the technology that we are developing to put in place. I sort of look at that as the, the sausage making of our business, of internet security. People don't want to, want to be available. They don't want to necessarily see all of that. We've done a lot of man-on-the-street interviews over the past couple of years, just asking both company employees as well as users and asking what's important to them. The type of feedback that we get is people want to ensure that as they transact on these networks, that their information is protected and their privacy is maintained. That they're not gonna, their machines are gonna get infected and they're gonna stay safe. That they can very conveniently access the services they're looking for. That if they're gonna buy some shoes or an iPod, it's gonna come on time, it's gonna work, and it's gonna be guaranteed. So in the end, consumers and users really just wanna be able to quickly and conveniently identify and access trustworthy sites so that they can get their business done or get their entertainment done. It's not about all the understanding everything that happens underneath. However, as we know that fraud is continuing to rise, it's becoming more and more of a problem, more and more of a challenge for users to be able to distinguish what is trustworthy and what isn't trustworthy. As we know, fraudsters tend to target uh, sites where users spend a lot of time and where they have some sort of inherent trust. I think what that's resulted in, over the past couple of months, we've seen a large growth in the types of malicious uh, web malware that's focused on social networking sites. Consumers tend to trust these sites very much um, today, which is certainly evident by the amount of personal information people are willing to post up there for other people to see. And they also spend a lot of time on these sites, several hours a day, sometimes more at home, and, and of course, as we all know, unfortunately, sometimes at work. So it's sort of a perfect storm with this really open, trusting group of people willing to put all this information and spend all this time out there in the social networking sites. So I want to talk about uh, one example of some malware that we uh, recently identified with uh, the help of a research partners of ours, uh, Tom Strachner, that really looked at trying to manipulate uh, consumers on these social networking sites. In this case, there was an attack that we sort of call the bad puppy attack. For those of us that use these sites, we're starting to get very comfortable with the paradigm of, re of receiving these virtual gifts from friends and families, whether it be a virtual bouquet of roses, someone recently sent me a virtual pickle, where there's a, an opportunity to decorate a virtual room. We tend to trust and accept these virtual gifts because typically they're forwarded to us from friends or family, or at least what appears to be friends and family, and their email addresses. In this case, the fraudster took advantage of that and developed what appeared to be a nice innocuous uh, gift of about adopting a lost puppy. And you know, as you can see, a really cute looking puppy and you know, who really wouldn't want to go ahead and adopt it? I don't know exactly know what that means, uh, adopting a virtual puppy, but you know, it seems harmless. But really, what, what happened here as part of this, there was really a button hijacking capability built into this free gift so that if the user was to click on any part of this, uh, this puppy attack, they were redirected uh, to another site that sort of alerted to them that they were having a problem and that there was some potential malware in their machine. And if they were only to follow these guidelines and download this software, they'd be able to protect themselves. If the user went through and followed all these requirements, that really resulted in the installation of a persistent rootkit on their device completely compromising their machine. These types of attacks, uh, particularly these types driven around these virtual gifts, are really you know, very serious in the way that they're eroding trust because they're using those email addresses and they're forwarding them on with email addresses of people we trust. In this case, once the machine was compromised, of course, that user's email account was then, and their friends list was then taken over, and this bad puppy was continued to virally spread across the internet and infecting more machines. So really, whether you're an individual user out there on the internet, or even a security professional like ourselves, it's becoming more and more difficult to be able to differentiate what is really a good site and a trustworthy site or uh, an offer or an email from one that's, that's infected. In this case, you couldn't even really trust that, uh, that puppy. You know, at Verisign, we look at, at this concept uh, across three real vectors, around users and devices, the network, and websites. On the network, as Ken talked a little bit about, we have a real strong history of operating the dot-com and .NET DNS infrastructure to very high levels of reliability and security so people can really get where they need to go on the internet. Across users and devices, 
We have uh, cloud-based strong authentication technologies that really can ensure that only the appropriate people with the appropriate rights are able to access the accounts and get the information that's in those accounts. On websites, really the core technology driving trust across websites for the last 15 years has been SSL technology and the combination, combination of authenticating those companies to ensure that they're really who are, they say they are, as well as encrypting that personal data, credit card information, to ensure that it cannot be hijacked. That's really been sort of the bedrock of trust on e-commerce on the internet for the past 15 years. Really, the, uh, the, our, our SSL has really been focused on these sites that do transactions, sites where you're either putting in a credit card or personal information to be able to encrypt that data. A lot of our customers, about 90,000 different websites, also display the VeriSign checkmark on that site in an effort to sort of communicate to their users that there's really trust out there. We estimate there are about 2 million of these websites that are actually doing transactions and requiring the encryption of SSL. There are also a whole series of other sites that we're, they're not actually doing, and we, tens of millions of these sites, that are not actually doing transactions, but are looking for opportunities to communicate to their customers that that site is a safe place to spend time and a safe place to transact. So last week, we introduced our new product, the VeriSign Trust Seal, which combines really that business authentication to really you know, authenticate that, that company, as well as doing a daily malware scan of that site to ensure that that site's not been infected, and if we do find the malware, that it's quickly remediated so the users can really trust that site. Those customers then have the ability to display that check mark and communicate clearly and simply to these consumers that this is a trusted place. We also think deployment of the service will actually generally make our internet neighborhood a safer place. By, by constantly doing this daily malware scan of all these sites, we'll have the ability to very quickly identify the malware and take it down before a lot of the damage can be done. Looking forward, we'll be adding more and more features to these products, our core SSL, our trust seal, as we continue to try to protect that internet infrastructure and provide that trust for our users. We'll be prioritizing those features that we add based on what we hear from our customers and from their customers. So we're really excited about, about this opportunity to drive trust and, and security on the network. So I appreciate your time, and I'd like to turn it back over to Jim for some closing thoughts. Thank you. Thanks, Fran. Well, I hope you enjoyed those observations and insights from Ken and Fran. Uh, let me just conclude by saying that um, looking out at the Internet, I think it's fair to say that security tools are everywhere, but trust is in short supply. And trust is in emotion. If it's not felt, it's not there. And I think as security practitioners, we really need to embrace this, understand it, and apply it. Uh, if we don't, we're going to let our users down. Thank you very much.